at the end of part one, we managed to get this thing fired up with some strange things on the screen. And I surmised it was a problem with the memory, this section of memory here, which is the lower memory. And I was kind of right, except there was another massive clue what was going on on that display in the absence of any color. Um, it was completely black and white. So with that not getting its 12 volts and these things not working properly, we can probably safely assume that there's a problem with the voltage coming from this circuit over here. And um, when I was prodding around with my multimeter, that was indeed the case. And in fact, let me show you exactly what I did. So um, we managed to get it fired up and that's because we replaced our five volt regulator down here. Um, now, most of the chips on the board only use the 5 volt supply. Uh, and with a 5 volt supply, all of these things fire up, apart from these down here and this up here. This requires 12 volt AC, and these require plus 5 volts, plus 12 volts DC, and minus 5 volts DC. And uh, let me show you exactly what I mean. So, let's apply some voltage to the board hope you can see the multimeter. We've got nine volts coming in, which is being pulled a bit low at the moment. Five, five volts coming out of that. And we can now have a look over here. So this, I believe, is our five volt rail. That's correct. That's ground, which is correct. And then this one over here, I think it should be 12 volts or minus five volts of fact, minus five volts that one, yes. And this should be 12 volts down here. And as you can see, we've got about eight volts there. So with that being said, let's unplug it quickly. We've obviously got a problem with our power supply. Now, what I can do is I can go away and I can start fiddling around and working out exactly what's going on over here. Although what I'm tempted to do before I do anything else is to remove these chips from the board, um, possibly remove the upper RAM as well. The chances are these are all toast now anyway, because they were running with five volts and not their 12 volts and their minus five volts. So they're probably toast anyway. But what I can do is I can get them off the board and I can then test them to see if they're okay. Um, I built a tester the other day, link to that is in the top corner. Um, and I could also test the upper RAM at the same time. With all those chips removed, from this board and tested whether they're good or bad, I can then start to work on working out what's going on on this DC to DC circuit over here. So let's make a start and let's remove some chips. So I think that's as much work as I want to do on this PCB at the moment, given that I'm damn good clean with some alcohol. We'll let that dry for a moment. And what's that's doing? Let's test the RAM. Well, would you know that? It looks like every single one was absolutely fine. And that's good news. Now these are all working. These were my first one that I refurbished, uh, which you would have seen in part one. So these are all perfect. Now, let's check the upper ICs, and these are the eight which are here, and they're in the order in which they came out, so the bottom left is the bottom left. Right, hope you can see that. That is a red light, and that is a chip. And in total, there were three upper memory chips which were kaput. Uh, well, that's quite interesting. Um, let me put that over there out of the way, and I'll show you which ones they are. So, uh, this was the bottom left um, and then that was the next row up there so it was chip number in fact we can just work it out actually it was uh, ic uh, 17 ic 22 no 20 and ic 19 it looks like i think that's right oh, i'll put it up on the screen if i've got it wrong but there we go three chips out of the upper memory were kaput uh, it was very interesting but that's according to this so what we might do is we might put all the chips back in and test it with 
this once it's up and running. And this is going to tell us if there's any problems with any of the memory in the machine. Good, right, let's unplug that and put that away and put the memory away as well. Right, let's get back to the board. Now, what we need to do is I've cleaned this up as you would have seen. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just pull you out a little bit there. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do some continuity tests uh, between this pin and this pin. Right, I'm happy with all of that. You know, it may be that one of those three chips were bringing the entire voltage rail down and causing the whole thing to, uh, to muck up. So I'll tell you what, let's put some volts on the board right now. I have also been shopping as well and I've bought new caps to go in here. They could be the reason why some of the voltages are not working. But I'll be honest with you, I have a hunch because apparently they're renowned for it it's either TR4 or TR5, which are broken. And like I said, I've been shopping. I do have now replacements for these two, but let's do it step by step and let's go through it properly and we'll see what happens. So uh, this should be five volts indeed. This should be uh, 12 volts and it's not. And this, this should be minus five volts and it's not. Okay, let's check for um, five volts here. Yes. Okay, so let's just have a poke around TR4, see what's going on here. So we've got nine volts coming in and we should have something coming out the other end. We don't. Let's have a look, poke around five volts at TR5. So it's between one of these two. The easiest way to check these uh, two transistors is to actually pull them up the board and then we could do some very simple diode checks to just see um, which, which was working correctly. We can do that really, really easily. All right, now what I'm gonna do is refit the uh, sockets here, uh, ready to reseat the memory when it goes back in. Uh, so I'm going to crack on with that and uh, right, cue another montage. We're done with that bottom end of the board now. Um, like I said, I have been shopping. I've bought things already. I've bought the new set of caps. I've bought a new voltage regulator, switch mode to go in there, uh, and a few other things as well, including a membrane. But one thing that did arrive today was some new transistors. And we are going to test those. We're going to take out the existing transistors, and that's TR4 and TR5. We're gonna take those out and we're gonna compare those against the replacements. Now this one is the 751 and that replaces um, TR5, I think it is. And we've got another one as well, which I have put around here somewhere. Where the bloody hell have I put those now? Just my luck, isn't it? Ah, here we go. Uh, these ones here are the 651s, ZTX 651 transistors. Those replace the 650s, which I think are TR4. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare these transistors with these new ones and see if they're working. Nothing that side. Put a negative lead here. Nothing that side. Nothing that side. and 609 that side. Right, well that tells us then that if the positive is in the center on the base 
negative is on the outside leg that tells us then that this is an NPN transistor which if you go and check out what it is you can see that it's right that is um, 0.609 volt drop across the base and either the collector or the emitter I don't know which way around that is but crucially it's not working that way around so we can say with some fairly firm confidence that TR4 is toast. Okay, I'm happy with that. Next one is this little fellow up here. So, negative pin to the middle because we know that that's the base. 0.658 volt drop across those two. 0 0.5, 0 0.659 volt drop across uh, the middle and the outer one there. So we know the base is in the middle pin. 654. Okay, let's swap them around and see if we've got a dead short going on across these two. Nothing across these two nothing so that transistor is actually fine we're going to replace it anyway because we have got replacements um, and they do take a bit of a beating so we'll put a new one in but it would seem tr4 was our toasted transistor Right, after a quick battery change on the camera um, and just having a bit of a tidy down, I'm now ready to start checking whether we've got some volts. So, let's bring that over. Hopefully you can see that okay. Um, again, I'm just connecting the negative lead to a ground pin, a ground source, which is there. And that means I've got my positive lead which I can use. Right, let's plug it in and see if we've got any smoke. I can hear a oscillation. So let's go for five volts, 12 volts, minus 4.91 volts, Ground, millivolts, five volts, you can hear a screaming, something's oscillating, something's screaming away, I can hear it, high pitch sound, very interesting, but that would indicate we've got correct voltages. So do you know what, if I was to plug a TV into that, we might have something. That's very encouraging. Let's replace the lower RAM and let's see what happens. Okay, they all look good. Right, let's try it. And oh my God, how green does that look? Well, that's encouraging. That's really encouraging. That's absolutely brilliant. It's basically working, isn't it? Right, okay, so we can adjust the screen um, with the combination of these two uh, resistors and those two caps. So, um, I'm just going to give it a quick go on that one there and that's actually sorted it out completely look so let's see what the other one does slight purple well that's it I think that's absolutely sorted do you know what that looks better than the other one I've built 
Oh, wow. And there you go. A um, complete fix. It now works. But don't worry, there's still plenty more for us to do on this board. Um, what we need to do, of course, is change these caps, which will improve situations even better. We're going to change this component over as well, because this gets hot and that heat sink is already very hot. We're going to look at ways of cooling the ULA down as well. I've got a couple of solutions for that. And then we're going to replace this module, like I keep saying, with something that provides even better quality video. And of course, we need to replace this upper memory as well. I'll go and order a couple more chips. Uh, we need three chips. I might just go and buy another eight. So there we go. Uh, join me on the next one. I hope this has been useful for you. Ta-ra!